Now let's get into something a little bit interesting. How many ever wondered why on earth Abram had his name changed to Abraham? That's a kind of a bizarre thing, don't you think? Well, here's why. It's because Abram is made up of four letters, Aleph, Beit, Resh, and a final Mem. I'll tell you what these letters mean. You've already learned the first two. Aleph is the strong leader. Beit is what? House. Resh is the head of. And Mem is, is uh, water or seas. Or, and, and seas and water in Scripture means people or many. Okay? Uh, it's also a womb is what Mem uh, is representative of. And so what Abram's name actually meant before it was changed was the strong leader of the house is the head of many. Head of the sea. The sea of people. And so that sounds amazing. That is incredible. But when he changed his name, he, he added one single letter because we, we split the Resh and the Mem and we make room for the hay. And so, and hey means revelation or to reveal. And so what Abraham's new name meaning would mean would be the strength of the leader of the house is the head of revelation for many. Because now it wouldn't be just a static two-dimensional, he's going to be the father of many nations, which by the way is where this comes from. It's right there. That's what it means. Uh, the strong leader of the house of many, the, the father of many nations. But now it wouldn't just be the father of any re, uh, many, it would be of any nation, it would be the one who would bring revelation to the nations. His name was changed. Why? Because in Hebrew, every letter has a prophetic meaning. So when you have a name in Hebrew, it has destiny written inside of it. So this is why Yahweh had to change the name of Abram to Abraham because his destiny changed. His mission was changed. He was given a new name. Let's move on to another one that you're, you're familiar with. How about Sarah? Very simple. A sheen, a resh, and a yod. The sheen is connected to the, the fire of the living God that consumes. Resh is the head of and yod is the power or the hand or work or deed. The right hand. It's the first letter in the name of Yahweh. The power of the right hand or deed or work. And so Sarai's name meant to consume the head through the hand or the head of power. And what did Sarai do? Before you know, she, she her, the, the prophecy, excuse me, in Genesis, after the fall was what to the serpent that you would, you would bite he healed, but he would bruise your head. It was through the seed of the woman that the head of the enemy, the head of Hasitan, would be crushed. So Sarai's name meant to consume the head through hand. But that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because what that really is, is that's taking power into our, our own hands. And that's what many of us do today, is we, we don't have a hay in our lives. Because we're, we're, we're working without revelation. You're doing things on your own. You're, you're operating through sight and, and not through spiritual insight. You're not oper operating through faith. You're operating in flesh. And this is Sarai's name, which is why her name had to be changed. Because it had to have revelation built into it. Because now it is the fire of God that consumes the head through revelation. You see, you cannot defeat the enemy with your flesh. You cannot defeat the enemy with your hand because we do not fight against the powers of darkness through flesh and blood. We fight them through revelation. And revelation is defined as the spirit of Mashiach, the spirit of the Messiah. Folks, you can't fight the enemy on your own. You must fight him through faith. Faith starts with prayer because did you know that the spiritual gifts are connected in proportion to your faith? Some of you want to learn about the spiritual gifts. I can't even go to the spiritual gifts yet because we don't even have the faith to understand them or walk in them. That's why we're beginning behind closed doors with a prayer team. Because until we here at Passion for Truth and those of you online start on your knees, you will never be able to lift your hands in ancient paleo a pictograph form and have revelation. You'll never have the behold moment until you start on your knees. 
Because the letter that comes before hey is Dalit, which is an impoverished man that Gimel gives to. That's why it's an do open door. Because the open door never is open until you are bent down in humility and willing to receive from the previous letter. The rich man. That brings revelation. Sarah's name to consume the enemy, the head, through revelation. And that is exactly what was prophesied in Genesis. Come and join us as we travel back in time 4,000 years ago to discover exactly where the holidays of Christmas, Easter, and even Valentine's Day come from. Why do we celebrate the birth of Jesus on December 25th? Whose birthday really is on December 25th? Where did we come up with December 25th? Where did the star on top of the Christmas tree come from? Where did the Christmas tree itself come from? Where did St. Nicholas come from? Are we sure that St. Nicholas even existed? Have you ever wondered where the famous phrase, ho, 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 comes from? It comes from the late 1600s when they used to have plays and before the devil would come on stage, he would announce himself by saying, ho, ho, ho. Did you know that original Santa's elves weren't little guys that made toys, they were Krampus demons that would punish the children if they weren't good for that year, while St. Nicholas would give them gifts if they were good. Who is the Easter Bunny? Where do we get Easter eggs from? Why do we celebrate Easter on the first Sunday after the vernal equinox? Did you know that Christmas was illegal in the United States until the mid-1800s? Can we celebrate these holidays according to the Bible? This is by far the most popular video on the internet on the history of Christmas and Easter. This video has changed hundreds of thousands of people's lives and it will change your life too.